Campbell Jones, 72 years old. I'm standing on the site for the train wreck happened on New River here, 1928, on Chinese Day. And here's where the smoke was laying in the branch right there off of the freight train. The freight train was coming out far, the passenger train was backing up. And they gave me the deal deal and the drink Grand water out of that branch right there. I saw him put him on the train, but I thought he did, but I seen him move his hand, so I knew he wasn't dead. They took him to the gate, that's on the baggage car, two of them. And they were dead, I think, by the time we got to the hospital at Gaylax. Three people lost their lives. The old Dillon, Lee Mandel, and maybe Gladys Carton. Gladys Carton was from Austinville. The old Dillon, Gam Betty, Lee Mandel, he was pure nasty. He was the first on the train. And the train, all you can see of the engine on the freight train was the bottom of the wheel. It run plumb through the, the wooden coaches started into the second one. Hog Brown, he was a black man, he was riding a cow catcher, and he jumped off and caught a telephone pole. You would be right there. Went around that pole and pulled out his watch and looked, and, and it was three minutes after 12 o'clock, and the passenger train doesn't come a mile, and it was much ahead of time. You turn around, you can see behind me how it's not a bad curve at all, but the passenger train, the freight, the freight was running so fast, trying to make five miles in seven minutes which he would have made it if the passenger train hadn't been ahead. They run together right here where it happened at November the 20th, uh, 16th, 19th, and 28th at three minutes after 12 o'clock. And that school kid, the teacher brought us up here. My brother and Sam over chucking corn right up by. And they heard that run. Seen them coming. My brother did. He said, Sam said, them trains are going to run together. Sam said, no. He said, they know what they're doing. Brother quit chucking corn when they hit. He said, I told you. Sam said, they just bumped us in the bed. My brother come down here right then. Sam, he went to the house. So the freight the engine on the passenger train wouldn't hurt. So the engine on the passenger train, which was the backing up, got out and walked up there to see what had happened. And he seen what he had run into. He dropped his head and said, Lord, Lord, Lord. And that's what happened right here. November the 16th, 1928, three minutes after 12 o'clock on a pretty warm, sunshiny day. That's all. That right there. That's where the, the section form was sitting there. And one of them said to them, said, I hear they're afraid of coming. And the whistle was blowing. Sit right there and get the passenger train run by them. Didn't get 300 yards to run together. Sit right there and get that happen. Going to school one time up by my sister, who's a seven years young and I am. She fell right here and rolled off right there and stopped laying right on the edge of that right there. And then went off that much. She had about 20 foot to have fell, but it killed her dead as a micro. She stopped on the edge of that right there. I ain't scared you to death. A sidetrack hit right up above where you see them locks hit. The fella was run together there. It's about 500 yards or six up there. Nice blind curve they had to go around. It wasn't a bad curve at all. Just a running some fast. Right up after that trestle, the end of it, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. But this here side, of, you could put a four box car and didn't have but one caboose in the engine, that's all it had. It had plenty of room to put and had plenty of time if the passion train hadn't been ahead of time. He'd have made it. I stood out down the yard up by my house a many times and listen to him blow that whistle to get plumb out of here and go and go diving hole blowing that uh, passion train whistle. Now he could blow it, boy. There used to be a fellow na named Shoemaker. He was a farming boy. They say they'd give him a drink of liquor and he'd get on that whistle and he'd make you cry about it. Here that thing blows so lonesome. Huh. Old old cabin right in there, them pines. Uh, if it ain't rotted down, you can't see it, them pines go up. 
Right up by. I remember when it was built. Marvin Shoot built it. My brother Reed took a pair of mules and dug the log from the field. Took it two days to drag the log to build that thing out of Well, yeah, William used to run the store that right that, that rock wall. And he got his merchandise come in on the train up on the side track. He'd take the horses and wagon, go down and get his stuff and take it up by the house. And that's way he done his business. Uh, the only store I love between the trees and the high holes and that's that time. He'd buy mining props and sell it uh, sell the mining props to the coal cut in West Virginia and the people he bought the mining props off of would take the merchandise up in the store, so he made twice off the mining prop and off his merchandise too, but he had a great big business going on at one time. Right there where it happened there. And the spring right above that rock, rock wall right there where he got his water from. And you used to have a big blacksmith shop out there in the big barn. Boy, that was an awful nice house at that time. Had his house and, and store all built together. Ab William. Sure, all of them here one time was in corn. And uh, Austin William knew that was here behind us. Well, had it in corn. Dinner time corn come, he tied the old white mule over and come up here to the house eating dinner. He looked out the door and the old mule was going through the yard. He, he got loose and swam that river and went to the barn. And another time he had it in corn, the river got up, corn the weather together, and I seen him take boats and they go right down them rolls of corn and pick that corn off and throw it in them boat to save the corn. That was back in the late 20s or early 30s when that all happened. The island rolled up since then, but I've seen that in corn. One time I had old cabins on that. That was back here in the early 50s or through the 50s. Had about 13 cabins on that. The river got up and you see what it done. It took every one of them off. Had 13 of them on that. You can see what's left. That's the island right above the bridge junction here. You see the bridge right there, which is goes across the bridge and up the creek, the Chesson Creek, that goes to take you into Gay Lake. It's 12 miles from north of Gay Lake. Put them over a mile. And used to have the two rails here, ladies. It's kind of like carrying a spare tar on a car. Something happened to two rails that broke them. They had two right here. They put them over a mile. They were on them mile posts. They had two spare rails sitting up. And them all the furniture factory burnt down up on Galax. They had to stop here and register and had a telephone here. And they stopped the register and the telephone was ringing. And they, they answered the telephone. And I don't know how many boxcars the off? freight train had. He pushed them back Can up on this freeze track line. He took the engine and went that 12 mile back in the Galax and got up on got them boxcars up from the furniture factory. Yeah. And the boxcar didn't burn down. But he put them uh, put them box car back up on the free line. He didn't have nothing but the engine going back to gay line. Went up and got them box car out and it didn't burn. Twelve miles. Yeah. Used to have eight of them. They had four for the telephone people and had four for the telegraph. But before the train before the train stopped running, they took down four of them line. They got so you could telegraph and telephone at the same time over the same wire not interfere with each other, and they took down four of them. There's only four of them left, and they got the radio, they come back and took them four down. So they didn't have no telephone line before the train kept running. They'd done it all by radio. That, that barn was built 19 and 18, the day of the second day of February. We're in 19 and 91. My brother Howard was 10 years old when I was, and he said the roof was put on that our barn 19 and 18, the second day of February. So that's how old our barn is you're looking at up on the hill down Still a pretty good barn. The time of Thomas Jones living in the house born in, 72 years old. How oh, when they put this here bridge together, they brought this out here in section, and they had these here rivet machine, and a man be over here uh, hating these here rivet, getting them red hot, and he'd take a pair of tongs, he would throw them over that fellow running a rivet machine, he'd catch them things in a, in a bucket made kind of like a funnel, and he'd take these tongs and reach it out and get that red hot rivet and stick it in that hole, put that rivet in there, brrrr, and argue the rivets. Well, I seen them put them in there. 1931. See, he had working inside here in the section. But the very idea, though, that them trains were running, they'll wish you all the time. Never didn't miss a run. Ready just put it seven foot. Put that gun. 
Wasn't no signs up there like that. <laughs> I wouldn't have done it, and I wouldn't cr jumped off the side of it either. I was going to jump off, but I right down the river though when he done it. I said I didn't want to see him kill himself. I was up there watching him jump off. But what, what do you jump off? Well, I'm here somewhere. I, mean, I don't know exactly. I guess I'm here about where we had. I don't. Know. You didn't tell anybody about it, either, did you? Well, uh, was he? old Thornton, I tell you, Jerry Thornton's daddy. He's down here when they turn his track up, and I don't know how many's down here. He said, hey, one fellow jumped off that bridge I jumped back on one time. He said, I don't know. Well, I know did tell him that was my brother. Tell me about this metal thing. I didn't only know I had one that crazy. Did he jump off that? Yeah, I jumped off the top of that, from down that water. What year do you think that was? I was in the 30s. What, what about the passenger train? The passenger train to go woo, 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 woo. That's it. That's Bill Martin, no shoemaker.